We're just about ready to begin, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome. This is January 2nd, 2023. It's 107 p.m. This is a special meeting of the Anchorage Assembly. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mr. President. Here. Mr. Saltz. Here. Ms. Raleigh. Here. Mr. Holland. Here. Uh, you mentioned Mr. Cross was excused. Yes. Ms. Zalatel is excused. Mr. Constant. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Ms. Bronca. Here. Mr. Rivera. Present. Mr. Martinez. Present. Mr. Myers? Here. Chair Constant, you have a quorum. Thank you. Next, we'll have the pleasure of allegiance of Mr. Johnson. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Paul, would you please read the land acknowledgement? A land acknowledgement is a formal statement recognizing the indigenous people of a place. It is a public gesture of appreciation for the past and present indigenous stewardship of the lands that we now occupy. It is an actionable statement that marks our collective movement towards decolonization and equity. The Anchorage Assembly would like to acknowledge that we gather today on the traditional lands of the Dena'ina Athabascans. For thousands of years, the Dena'ina have been and continue to be the stewards of this land. It is with gratefulness and respect that we recognize the contributions, innovations, and contemporary perspectives of the Upper Cookie Dena'ina. Thank you. Uh, for this meeting, we have one item, item 4A41, it's an executive session, legal briefing from the Municipality of Anchorage Department of Law. This executive session has been requested by the Assembly, and I'm not sure who's preparing to lay the foundation for this. Ms. Halter, you have the floor. Pursuant to AMC 230036A, the Assembly may recess to meet an executive session to discuss matters which by law, municipal charter, or ordinance are required to be confidential, including the provision of legal advice subject to protection by the attorney-client privilege. <clears throat> All information shared in this session is confidential. No official action may be taken in executive sessions except to give direction to an attorney or leave a negotiator regarding a specific legal matter and in waiver negotiation. <clears throat> the session shall be taped. Tapes will be available to members of the body and authorized staff, authorized staff only, and may be discussed only in further executive session. Tapes may become public at the date specified by the code for specific subject matters, or by the assembly if extended for good cause at the conclusion of the executive session. Any discussion which occurs at this executive session should only be discussed by the body in future executive sessions. Any member who needs to leave during the session may leave, but may only be updated on the discussions after his or her departure in a subsequent executive session or via review of the tapes of this session. Special invitees, employees, and staff members that the body determines are necessary to the discussions after his or her departure in a subsequent executive session or via review of the tapes. Oh, are necessary to the conversation to remain in the meeting during executive session. The ethics code states that no public servant shall use, disclose, or release confidential or non-public information gained through the person's municipal position unless authorized by law or order of the court. Any violation would be referred to the Board of Ethics. The code provides that the board may make recommendations for corrective action. Past recommended corrective actions have included financial penalties and other professional consequences. Additionally, the municipality may pursue a civil action against an official 
where the release of confidential information adversely affects the outcome of litigation or negotiations or leads to increased financial liability. Such a disclosure could also subject a member of this body to a recall election. Pursuant to state statute, the grounds for recall include misconduct in office, incompetence, or failure to perform prescribed duties, a violation of municipal confidentiality obligations would meet this criteria. The code does not specify, does not specifically provide for the collection and destruction of notes taken at executive session, but this has been past municipal practice to ensure the confidentiality of discussions held in executive session. If you would like me to collect or destroy your notes today, I am happy to do that. If you would like to take notes and retain them, I remind you that these notes are confidential and the failure to properly preserve their confidentiality could implicate the same consequences set out in this instruction. So, Thank you, Ms. Elzer. <clears throat> um, a couple of thoughts. This is a legal briefing for the assembly of ongoing litigation. This has historically been a customary practice more than once a year, usually, or at least once a year. It hasn't happened for a long time. And so I'm grateful to the legal department. And this is one more sign of evidence of returning to normal order of business to just get these briefings in the flow. And so, um, I think the next question I'm supposed to ask is, do members feel like they have sufficient information to believe that a foundation has been laid to justify a motion to go to an executive session? Any questions? Hearing no questions, is there a motion to move into executive session? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Rivera, seconded by Mr. Bond. Uh, can we do a unanimous consent as the clerk here, or is this one we need to record? We can do a unanimous consent. Any objection? Hearing none, an executive session has been ordered. So now uh, we would ask everybody who is not an invited member to uh, leave. We will be secure in the room. We will come back after the session to determine um, what to do with the recording. To enter into an executive session after we take a roll call of members and others in the room. Madam uh, Clerk, would you please take a roll? Mr. Martinez? Present. Mr. Perez Verdia? Here. Ms. Bronga? Here. Ms. Frawley? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Ms. Volland? Mr. Here. Volland? Here. I apologize. Mr. Constant? Here. Mr. Rivera? Present. Mr. Myers? Somebody needs to turn the mic on. Can you turn your mic on? Fine. Yeah. Go ahead. Mr. Myers, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Mr. Salt? Here. So, also in the room, we have go through. Just go ahead and roll call. And how is our municipal attorney? Lydia Johnson, assistant municipal attorney. Quincy Arms, assistant municipal attorney. <laughs> Perfect time. Jasmine Willoughby, Assistant Municipal Attorney. Uh, Jason Thomas, Assistant Municipal Attorney. Megan Berger, Assistant Municipal Attorney. We also have from our Assembly Council's office. Matthew Hurd, Legislative Council to the Assembly. Dean uh, Gates, and Council. <laughs> also, our interpreters. Brenda Pobley and Gina Ashman. Then we have special invited guests in the room, um, Bill Falsey from Booth Reynolds and Leslie Need from Lenny Bennett Bloomstein, and they've been invited because we've just been trying to keep them in the loop of the work that we've been doing. And so, um, nothing specific. Okay, so that's our roll. Now we start the tape of the executive session, and we do one more roll. And then sort of I didn't realize there would be anybody left the assembly in advance of this. We are going to be delivering confidential information about these cases and positions that we're taking in the cases. Um, I don't have any NDA or anything signed from um, these attorneys. Um, 
so I'm expressing some sort of objection to their being here. Um, so these are, while we do represent the assembly and the administration in these cases, um, there are some cases where we only represent the, or we're, we're representing the administration, and so I don't know that it would be appropriate for Okay, so if I might, how about then for those items, you can triage them and come up with a list that you think they shouldn't participate in because you believe that you are opposite position to the assembly, and then we will go through those after at the later part of the meeting. So, so we don't have anything that we're particularly um, adverse to the assembly. So that's that's important. There's that one case that was filed by the assembly um, that we will be talking about. Um, but I just we didn't anticipate the there. That's my mistake. I'm sorry. And so I didn't have time to prepare any sort of objection if we, if we thought we might have one. Um, so I think as much as I like these people, um, I, I'm going to object to their being here. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to hear Mr. Gates opine on this or Mr. Hurt. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, yes, thank you. Well, I don't have an opinion about the individuals. They are both on contract. Uh, the assembly, um, uh, I guess, matters as a sign. So I actually don't know what buying up the Department of Law has and which litigation we're going to talk about today. So I have no idea if there's any sort of conflicts. But what I thought I could provide this body right now is what the code says about being in executive session. And that's in uh, section 2336B, and it says members of the public should be excluded from executive session, especially in by these, which are these two individuals and staff members that the body determines are necessary to the discussion, they remain in the meeting to an executive session. And so the phrase that the body determines, it leads up to the body. The chair of the body did the meeting, basically, I guess, ruling that they are unnecessary for today's executive session. But um, the body can make a motion about that and vote whether they should be here or excluded. I think that's what this host was asking for. But, uh, or we can just leave the church fully as it is to proceed. So, nobody. I think this procedurally, how you would handle um, this host's objection. I um, just don't think have anything to add. Yeah, the only other thing I can add is that there, uh, from the perspective of the Mr. Paulson, Excuse me, is neat. Um, I mean, if they were to identify that there was a conflict of interest in them being here with one of the cases that they were being briefed on, they would, I mean, bring that to our attention and need to be excused. I mean, if we could get like an agenda or something like that on what you were going to be briefed on, as the chair suggested, that may facilitate doing that in an efficient way and not. Uh, That's okay. Uh, I saw some nodding, so I want to see if that thought was welcome. <clears throat> yes, so like I said, I had not prepared, and in fact, we were very careful who we brought today. We had an intern and other people who work in the office that we did not feel it was a, we didn't assume that, that they would be part of the executive session. Um, so it was su suggested by uh, the vice chair that perhaps we take five minutes and allow the attorneys to meet with the invited guests and have a conversation. And if there are any red flags, we can address them with facts instead of just possibilities. Is that reasonable? Yes. That's okay. right. So we will do that. We will. I don't know what we do with the record for this five minutes. I guess we just let it roll and let people know you're being recorded. But if you go back to the back, you guys can talk because there's no <laughs> mic. Thank you. You can tell me at the end if you want this to be part of the roll call or part of the so we can splice. I don't think we should. <laughs> and then I'll just stop it when the decision is made, and we'll start with another roll call. Yeah, that's what this is pre-executive session. <laughs> Uh, 
sorry to come up the worst. They're all gone. It's a full power of them. No pieces left when you go back and have colors. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she's here. It's a no one who would be able to get home. Oh, interesting. I didn't check with you. I just like, oh, well, these are so like. We should yeah. not keep on that. Oh, sorry. It's not open. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, now we have a Philly. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, 
I just wanted to be consistent. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Any charges? This is scheduled. Yeah, it's written as Jen. So. So she's she's by Meryl Field area, and her yard is where I'm touching my fields. Oh, yeah. Yep. And I'm up by the mountains, and you know, we're not even close That's to me, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does she have good sun? Yeah, she's yeah. got a really great yeah. south facing front yard. But even her backyard's ahead. All my neighbors came out. Like, yeah. Oh, this looks great. <laughs> but they were like, it makes a big difference. Like, I mean, it was across the street, going up the hills by us, Bob the hills. Yeah. Now I got it. Now it makes At least three yeah. people. So it would make me some more work. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I just have too much. It was, we had no idea we were moving to the hillsides. We call it hillside east. So we're going to be hillside north. Yeah, it's a lot of while I was doing it, like, yeah, I think he said, I would get over to the Moldy area and I'm aware of the I mean, I don't know where it was, but it was almost like there was this line in the cap, so it just dropped last time. Well, that's the whole East Side Center. Yeah. Often we'll look at sunny, I mean, there's clouds, but it's mostly sunny over our house, and at some point, it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We are kind of like city. The only place I ever recorded temperature was the airport. And now they're finally getting like, yeah, Camp Creek Science Center. It's going to be minus 12. It's 20, it's okay. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a little bit of a little all in honor the concerns of the legal department, they will not this time have our special guests stay. Um, although in the future it might happen, we'll provide notice, which will make it easier for everybody to mentally prepare for the work. And so, thank you for attending, and I'm sure we'll be seeing you soon. Thank <laughs> you. You're out of executive session, but I need to get some things going. Are you going to do another roll call? Do we need to do another roll call? I don't, I don't think we do. It's still in the next meeting. So, um... That's for your time. It's nice to see back in here over this business. So we are now back on the record, and um, except for three motions to extend the meeting, no action was taken in the executive session, which is a procedural motion, something to extend the time. 
Is there a motion regarding when to disclose the recording of the executive session? Um, sure. Would you read that section again, section A? Um, yes, it's actually section 230.36C1, and uh, it says the recording should be disclosed by the Greece only uh, upon request pursuant to chapter 390 according to the following timelines. That one is uh, if the session concerns any litigation, the release date shall be when all causes of action have been solved by final judgment or when further claims rising from the matter are otherwise owned. So moved as stated by Mr. Gates. Second. Moved by Mr. Rivera, seconded by Mr. Wong. Is there any discussion of the motion? Hearing and seeing none, others agree. The will be released after all pending litigation is finalized. Um, so next on the agenda, we have audience participation and members of the public wish to speak and be heard. And on the phone sides. No. I guess next on the agenda, we will have a summary of the comments, I believe. And also my cover page. So we'll start over here with the rentals. No comments. No comment, thank you. No comment. Have a good weekend. <laughs> no comment. No comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No comment. Uh, Sam, this is Ms. Raleigh Overshaw. Nice long weekend. Thank you. We are adjourned.